So previously I did a video talking about ES6 import and export statements. So how you could actually import modules with ES6. What I didn't talk about was dynamic imports and using the import method as opposed to just the import statement. So that's what this video is going to focus on. How can we dynamically import things or conditionally import things into our code? And by conditionally, I mean you have a variable that you want to check or some expression that you want to check. And if it's true, or if you need something on the page, then you're going to import some other module. So what we have here is simple little web page. I've got some script that's adding two paragraphs. One's got a random number, one's got a random color. Every time I refresh, gives me a new number, new color. Great. The code for the number and the color is kept inside of another JavaScript file. So I created one called utils. So this is my utilities function. And you can see here, I'm exporting one function as the default function. Um, it's called rand, but by calling it default, that's the one that will come out automatically. We can give any name we want to that. I've got another one called color. So this one's generating the six digit hex value. That's this string right here. Sometimes, there we go. So this string right here, that's what's being generated by this one. And the number, some number between one and today's date, that's the random number we're getting. So we're importing this. By putting the export statement in our code, we can use import. So this is the standard import export that you get with ES modules. Um, you can see here, I'm gonna call my default rand. I could use any name I want, but this is what I'm calling it. And then color is the other thing that I'm import importing from that export file utils, and then we're using it. So inside my DOM content loaded function, I'm creating a paragraph and I'm calling the function right here for RAND to generate the number. And right here, I'm getting the color. And I'm also setting the style property so that every time I refresh, it writes out the value and it also changes the style property of that. Okay, so that's how this works. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to change this. Instead of using the import statement, I'm going to show you dynamic imports. Inside of our code right here, we're going to use the import method. This is dynamic imports. So this is after the page is loaded. So DOM content loaded has already fired. We're going to import and we just, same way we do up here, we're just going to provide the name of the file that we want to import. Cool thing about this, it uses promises. So promises are built in here and we will have a then and we will have a catch like this. Inside the then, we're going to put a function. Inside the catch, we'll have a function as well. I'm gonna put arrow functions in both places. So this will be the error object that we get inside the catch. And inside of here, what we're gonna get is the object. This is the object coming in from the imported file. We're going to have inside of here something that is called default and something that is called color. These are the two properties that we're going to get. So I'm going to do the default one here. We'll say default and I'm going to rename it as rand. And then inside of here, I'm just going to move this up inside of the function and I'll have to do an append Just remove the color part here. There we go. All right, so this right now is going to import this. And when we have success importing that, we're going to extract whatever the default method is. We're going to call it rand, and then we can use it inside of here. We can do the same thing with the color one as well. We can say we're going to import, it's the same file. Now I'm doing this just to demonstrate that you could do this with multiple files. They are the same file right now and that's absolutely fine. We can do this twice, but there is a drawback to it. And I'm gonna show you that in just a moment. Okay, so we have our two catches, our two thens, Save that, and then on the page, you can see 
this is still running. I've saved it. I'm reloading the page. So we are now doing this loading. However, this works great if there's two different files, there's two different functions, there's two different areas uh, in our code where we're going to import things. I just wanted to demonstrate that we could do multiple imports on a page. The problem is, if you look at the order of these two paragraphs, as I refresh this, the order is different. Sometimes the colors first, sometimes the numbers first. And that's because these are promises. There's no guarantee of the order of these. It doesn't matter that this promise was created before this promise. We do have the issue where, okay, these two things are sort of both racing to get done and we have no guarantee which one's going to come back first. So if it is the same file, then really what we should be doing is importing both like this. And I'm going to take my code and I'm going to put it inside of here like so. I'll get rid of the other import. There we are. I'm importing the file once. When I have the file, then I'm going to extract rand and color, both of them, and I'm going to use them inside of here. And there we go. And the sequence, the number followed by the color is always going to work this way because it's only one import. There's only one promise that we're working with. Just to demonstrate that you could change the names because right now these are the same as the names inside the utils file. So we change this to R and I'll call this CLR. Now I'm going to call the function R here and down here instead of color, it's CLR. Oh, failed to load the rand function uh, default. I'm renaming it as, oh yeah, here we go. Color is the name and I'm renaming it as CLR. I forgot the <laughs> part where we have to actually use the name and then we can rename it. And change this message as well to make it more accurate. There we go. So now it's working again with a single import method call. So one dynamic import and we can add if statements in here as well. So if there was some condition that sets someplace else in the code, let's say somewhere in your code, you've got this variable called add num. And if that is set to true, you will actually do the random thing. If not, then we won't. We could say right here, if add num. So if it's true, then we're going to run this bit of code. We're going to do the import. And without it, none of that code's running. So the import is actually not taking place. It's not going and getting the file because this variable was set to false. So this is a conditional import, something that you cannot do with the import statement. I can't wrap this in an if statement. This has to come at the top. It's going to be done before the page runs. So none of thing on our page will run if we try and wrap this in an if statement. Nothing on the page is going to run until the import takes place if you're using the import statement. So now with it set to true, everything runs. We change it to false. None of that runs. The import does not take place. So conditional import, dynamic import. And one other benefit of the dynamic import is that if you're doing it this way with the import method instead of the import statement, it means that we don't have to write type equals module inside of here. This will still run. And there we go. All right. So copy of this code is linked to down in the description, the finished version of the code. Um, I hope that opens up some possibilities in your mind of what you can do with these import methods and dynamic imports. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave those down in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.